I said it before, one of the most talented people to ever come through our culture goes by the name of Y. Clef Jean. Absolutely. One of the most talented producers to ever come out of our culture goes by the name of Y. Clef Jean. Jean. One right of the right most right powerful right. activists to ever come out of our culture goes by the name of Y. Clef Jean. Jean. Understand me? I've seen this man through eras, Heather B. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I tried to tell you earlier today how important the Sway and King Tech show was, Sway. And I'm, I'm so glad you shared that story about Clef and the Fuji's coming through there and being a part of that history. Thank you. Absolutely, man. And since yeah. then, multiple Grammy Awards on the BET Humanitarian Award, a wow. Vanguard Award from the NAACP, nominated for a Golden Globe Award. Yeah. Come on, man. He's been doing it. Um, in Haiti, they awarded him with the National Order of Honor in merit to the rank of Grand Officer. Why Clef Jean is here, citizens. Why Clef is here. He's here. Mm. I was in the bay when y'all were in the bay, and I flew to the bay to see Tony, Tony, Tony. They were performing. Y'all were, they were at. What, what, what did y'all perform at in San Francisco? You remember what venue it was? Uh, oh, just I recently. Yeah, oh, just recently? It was, recently? Yeah, it was the in Chase, the stadium. The, yeah, it was in the stadium. Yeah. And I had to choose between y'all and the Tonys, but uh -huh. this was their last show. Uh -huh. And I figured I'm going to see Clef and him again. You are. I, I'm going to see y'all again. You know that. Yeah, but yeah. I had a friend that went to y'all show and said yeah. it was bonkers. She said it was amazing, like she was in a dream, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. and, and I love seeing that. You know, I love seeing that uh, when Miss Hill and you all get together. How is it different, though, from when we talk about the, you know, blunted on reality days to now? Like, it's, how's the dynamic change? Do you have to listen to her now? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I think that, you know, when we was younger, like Bono used to say, like, the Fugees is the Rolling Stones, you know, the mm -hmm. hip-hop Rolling Stone. Um, we came in the game like just band orientated. Like mm -hmm. the whole vision was like what happens when you take the suburbs and the hood and you put it together and we share that information. And um and I think that we all all three of us are insanely musically. Mm -hmm. Like musical musically. Like so um and again, um the best thing about uh the word reconciliation mm -hmm. is when you when you learn how to forgive, you know, I remember this when I met Mandela. Um and um, so my first Stunt. question was- You just said that real just lightly. Said that, like, uh, like it just happened around the corner or something like that. Right. But go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, Claire. Yeah, so I know like lightly. Yeah. <laughs> R.P. <R>. to <laughs> the homie you, Nelson. You, had, you checked me on that. He was like, <laughs> flux. <laughs> I was chasing. Flux. <laughs> yeah. No, so like one of the questions I, I, I really asked Mandela was like, yo, like I don't get this forgiveness court thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like. Cause it's about that an eye for an eye. Like somebody do something to mine, I'm gonna do something to yours. That's just naturally. But he was like, "Yo, man, the the power of forgiveness is a big thing." And I think that when you see the Fujis on stage, it's that what you're feeling is that reconciliation. Mm -hmm. It's like if you had problems with someone, like you could turn around and give them a hug and mm -hmm. be like, yeah. "We good now, right?" Because the world is missing that. And what happens is Fujis used to make you feel good mm -hmm. and sort of like so you have it that thing that's missing it's like you know you show up and and whether if it's an 18 year old or a 60 year old person it's the same energy mm -hmm. um and you don't get that in shows it's like the 18 year olds are going to their shows mm -hmm. and um i remember one place we was at it was the fujis and travis scott mm -hmm. travis was in one stadium packed to the to the ground <laughs> fujis in one stadium packed to the ground and then the shows are over and everyone's leaving and you could just see like the two generations like as they come together and the only thing that really separated us was the stadium right yeah mm -hmm. um so um that's sort of like the energy um it, it definitely is amazing um something that you create and then my cousin jerry wonder come on jerry um, wonder salute to jerry fourth, wonder man you know, like we call jerry wonder the fourth fuji uh -huh. um, we also had john forte mm -hmm. john, forte. john forte salute that guy too yes. man. yeah come on. And I and I don't think people understand um, the the Fugees like because um, the story is very deep. You know, John Forte was someone who got pardoned mm -hmm. by George Bush. Right. You know what I'm saying too. And I don't think that now this is long before like Kodak and my brother Wayne. Like I'm yeah. saying like so imagine like hip hop getting pardoned wow. by George Bush. So um, and this is like the refugee camp. Mm -hmm. So I would say like you know we we. Because, like, 
we authors that never talked about the the idea of like cause we from the gangbang. Yeah. We from the communities with the pimps and the prostitute. Like we mm. from that. So we just felt like we had to author it mm-hmm. in a different formation. So to, to to go back and to see that even like the outsiders. Yeah. You the know, outsiders. Uh, the outsiders oh, came out um, Jersey. That, that's, that's a Jersey that, thing. That's a Jersey <laughs> thing. <laughs> Rough Nation <laughs> Records. Rough <laughs> Nation <laughs> Records. So it was definitely Chris then, Schwartz. <laughs> yeah, but but think about it. So when we talk about the outsiders, yeah. We can't talk about the outsiders without talking about Eminem. Mm hmm. Because right? he because, was influenced. Yeah. So you have a whole thing like with the outsiders and Eminem, like Pace One, mm-hmm. uh, Young Z, Slang Tongue, RIP. So again, mm. <clears throat> the the connection of the Fuji thing is a very deep. It wasn't, it literally like the way that I could explain the Fujis when I look at the NWA story mm-hmm. is very similar because, like, you know, me and Jerry, we was in the hood in East Orange. And we took my uncle's basement and mm. we literally like in the middle of the hood and dead smack. You got the basketball court in the back with the one uh, with that the rim. rim. Yeah, the that one rim. rim. <laughs> and, and the pit bulls, right? And the yeah. Rockwellers. And then behind that, you got a crack house. Mm. Yeah. So and then we have the studio. studio. So it's sort of like um, when we look at that and then that studio was open to everybody. Mm-hmm. So the outs would come through because my thing was just like coming from my daddy's church. I was like the 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 dr dre of, of you know what i'm saying because i was like man i really if i could figure out a way to do like beats and you know the drug dealers could just pay me so i don't have mm. to sell the drugs you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just started doing these beats and i was like you know what i'm saying y'all want a demo man i got y'all you know and it was a big thing to get there was something called a dat mm-hmm. like it was a little digital thing, audio a, tape a digital audio tape mm-hmm. and you could take that and be like yo when you get to rca to them A and R's, you real happy. You got your dad. Mm-hmm. You can play that. Got your so, dad tape. Um, just to say, yeah, it was incredible. Mm. Oh, man, shit, you just ended really quick, man. I thought I was ready to go to the <laughs> hey, next story. Well, not, I hear what you're saying because there was so much history and richness. Yo, yo, in that. Is that the booger basement that people were referring to? Sometimes, yeah, yeah okay. that's the booger basement. basement. So the booger basement. I literally give everybody their names. You know what I'm saying? Jerry Wonder, El Boogie. I give. You know what I mean? Because um, like El Boogie. Miss Hill, like, she, you know what I mean? She brought Boogie to it. Mm-hmm. Like Nina Simone. Mm-hmm. Jerry, one day he would bring a, a, a vibe to it. Um, we also have prize. And people, so it was so crazy. Um, this is a funny story about the tour. So y'all see how I look, right? Yeah. Like Benjamin Butt. Like I reverse in age. <laughs> yeah, you know? I saw you doing the the, 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 the upside down push-ups and all that. that, that yeah, yeah, but that's, that, that's just the project in me. That's just the oh. DNA, you know, you flip on the mattress. That ain't okay. gonna go away. But it's sort of like... <laughs> Um, what I, I had a phrase I was I would call us like the old young niggas, right? So it's mm-hmm. like so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Old, yeah, what a hybrid. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, feel me? Yeah. So so we're 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 rocking and we start with vocab. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Elle's out there like dong, bang, bang, you know, I start and I'm behind, and she start one two, uh, the crew, you know, and I would come out, and um, in the beginning, and it was crazy because people didn't even recognize me mm. in the very very beginning it was like if you was a fuji fan yeah you was looking for some guy with some dreads you know what i mean uh-huh. so you Rex. have an image of 35 because you you missed this is when i also realized like a fuji fan missed an entire wide clef yeah they missed they never got to see hips don't lie they mm-hmm. don't know what maria maria is mm-hmm. they don't know i have an entire 10 million dollar catalog albums that is all Europe that they don't know, right? So yeah. it was sort of like when 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 Miss Hill was like, Why Clef Jean? It was ah you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then Prize comes out and just looks the same. Mm-hmm. And it was ill because when Prize came Prize out, does look the same. Prize just looks straight up the same. Like yeah. Prize the way he looked then, he looked he looked the exact same. And um and the audience erupted and it was just like that love energy. Mm-hmm. Um it just can't it can't be matched and it can't be duplicated. Is, is Prize going to be okay? We 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 read the headlines about some of his legal complications. Is he going to be okay? So you know what is a funny thing is there's an amplification of mm-hmm. what y'all see yeah. online, and y'all can amplify it as big as y'all want. That's what because you can't get caught up in the illusion of the internet, right? Mm-hmm. Because you got to understand if 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 I, if I may. 
as someone who's an ex-presidential candidate Tindade. of a country. Sapase. Ah! Sapase, right? Yes. And, and has put himself in the line of fire. So when I said I was going to be president of Haiti, there was no Donald Trump. There was no Kanye saying they was going to be president. Mm -hmm. I ain't talking about America. I say Haiti where they just assassinated a Haitian president, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, and we're mm -hmm. still trying to get justice for that. So there's what you see, and then there's what's behind the curtains. You know what I mean? Um, I do believe that Prize is going to be okay, okay because I feel like the amplification of what happened versus like what's behind closed doors is two different things. So I do believe that um, he's going to come up on top. Okay, salute to my brother Prize. I, I can't help, I'll be remiss if I didn't ask seeing you guys, you know, on stage. And, and to your point, like, when y'all did this show at the South Shore Seaport two years ago or something, yeah. or, or Lauren did her show, Miss Hill did her show, and y'all came out. Mm -hmm. um, I was with my daughter, who was 21 at the time, mm -hmm. who was like, Daddy, you got to give me tickets to this show. And, and I hate asking people for tickets, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's my daughter. Like I'm like, damn, you know, you you want to go that bad, daddy? You know, she's reciting <laughs> songs the whole nine. And to your point, man, we sat and saw that show, man, and it bugged me the fuck out that me and my daughter are singing the same lyrics, mm -hmm. and I'm yeah. looking at her like, how do you even? Yeah, you intergenerational. Know, yeah. Intergenerational. Yeah, like, look how crazy this is—a full circle moment. Suzette Williams, Uzi, who's my best friend, uh -huh. that's her son. That's who's now of intern. course, like, that's yeah. my family. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's so the family family. It, and yeah. to know the music and rocking is to what you're saying is true. We just keep having these full circle moments with y'all's music. It's yeah. some, it's insane. Yeah. So, so did y'all catch a vibe? Like, I, I don't know. Is there some um, new Fuji music in the making? Did y'all? I mean, all I could do is I could tell you we definitely caught a big vibe mm. okay you feel me like yeah not a little vibe <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> okay like like what they say i gotta put an accent that yeah man a big vibe, big vibe? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like actual re actual recording rastafari <laughs> like actual recording i could just tell you the vibe the vibe the vibe you, right? know, you, know, you, get, <laughs> you come up with how many <laughs> remixes you want right, the vibe <laughs> you know i'm gonna keep saying it <laughs> I mean, I, okay. I could remix the vibe. Big vibe. Big vibe? <laughs> <laughs> um, just to say, like, the synergy is dope. I'll tell you one thing, that when we was performing, what was amazing about the Fuji's, one of our, I don't know if it's a cheat code or whatever, mm -hmm. but literally the synergy of the Fuji's is there's a, a mystic energy mm -hmm. that's on the stage. And so we're not, like, tied to, like, a band that would say, Aperton or Pro Tools or like okay this is gonna be the mm -hmm, set mm -hmm. and then you're, you're like locked into a 90 minute set where you gotta go this song literally has to be the next song I'll give you an example so mm -hmm. we're in the west coast and I call up my brother Wayne mm -hmm. and, and you know big shout out to my Libra brother that's like my brother you know what I'm saying so and um and he comes so he's gonna be you know what i'm saying so we, we say okay you're gonna be, and, and wayne gets there early right mm -hmm. so then i'm like okay so we got to get wayne in early to, to the vibe so ready or not for example that should probably be towards the end right yeah wayne's there so literally or, or off the top just start ready or not mm -hmm. and now it's not the fuji version yet it's gonna be a wayne version of ready or not mm. it didn't exist it'll never exist again mm -hmm. um be real yeah be real you know what i'm saying cypress hill just mm -hmm. out of nowhere um black thought yeah. from the roots um and it's endless freeway mm -hmm. and it's endless um i would say another thing which was amazing i remember like being in brooklyn we didn't bring bobby schmurda out right in mm -hmm. brooklyn he's there like he shows up and boom 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 and he's in the crowd and having an amazing time and out of nowhere he hears his beat drop but it's the lyrics to Fuji La over it, right? Uh -huh. So this is what I'm saying. Like, this is how I say you celebrate, like, culture. And, I mean, no one can really do that but us. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying to you? So that's sort of like... And then the cheat code is, while this is happening, music is being created on stage. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. real time that don't exist. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And that was a lot of the stuff that you used to hear or hear. It's sort of like... What I was telling Miss Hill, I was like, yo, I can hear the sound of the stadium again. Mm -hmm. And that's when I'm most dangerous. So mm -hmm. it's like, so, so like 2024, you hear the production, like back, like I felt, I got the bug and I said, okay, it's, I, cause 
music is something like you gotta feel mm -hmm. and you gotta hear it. And when you hear it, it comes from a different place, man. So so we up. White Clef Sean is here. The new single is Paper Right. Did did Paper Right? Uh, paper Right. Get your paper right. It's yeah. about yeah. generational wealth. Well, um, it's the new single. You did a performance on Jimmy Fallon. Yes, sir. Um, you got Lola Brooke is on there. Flaugé is yes, on sir. there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Capella Gray is on there. Yes. Pusha T is on there. Yes, sir. But this is a song with purpose. Yeah, well, well, the first thing is the first record is 2024, which is uh -huh. very important. And um, so in my producer's bag and in my brain, it was like, okay, 54%, no matter how you see people acting like they balling, a black folks don't have no retirement plan, mm. right, period. So I think we got to just kill that facade and talk about that reality. Um, and you could be making money at a young age, but, like, the older you get, the more the reality happens, right? Yeah. And the reality comes like, okay, do you have a saving? So the key, um, I was approached by TIAA to mm. come up with a record that could talk about generational wealth. Who, wait, who? TIA? Who's that? Yeah, that, that's the company that basically, you know, um, it, it deals with, the, it, 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 it focuses on the idea of retire, this, this chapter of the company, which is um, Tashonda, who's the CEO, this chapter of the company focused on how they could present retirement mm -hmm. to a, a, a population of 54% in the sense of, how do we deal with this and focus on policy mm -hmm. and legislation, but how can we reinvent the idea of this danger that we see? So this literally is a CEO mm -hmm. of, a, of, a, of a company who, who feels passionate about this to say, okay, um, so that was the approach because you can have insurance companies, for mm -hmm. example, or different companies, but there's not companies that literally cater towards black folks, mm -hmm. black and brown folks. Mm -hmm. So this was like, how can we reinvent the idea of echoing, yo, black people, y'all gonna be in trouble. So the idea mm. of echoing that coming to me was like, yo, man, we know, like, you know how to do music and get the message across without being preachy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so in this process, um, CIA combined with Amazon, mm -hmm. and I think that every stream, right, a dollar, right? A goes, dollar, uh, every stream. Goes back to the, uh, the Gen organization. Yeah, first, first generation gener investor. So mm -hmm. every stream of this song, a dollar goes back to first generation investors. And then so first generation investors, which is amazing now, think about that. Again, that's like the youth. So it's like you can't just tell the youth. A, just for example, do want to open a barbershop. You say, okay, man, you got the American dream. Just make it happen. No, man. Like we literally got to put that investment back. Um, also, we have to hold big companies accountable mm -hmm. to helping being part of this generational mm -hmm. wealth. So, and we're able to do that. And um, and again, I would say this kind of a record. So here's the the thing. I look at my daughter that's 18, all the way to my generation, and I say, how can this message be translated? In a in a cool way, mm -hmm. so Lola Brooke. Yes, Lola is, Brooke. Is she like, just said it. We love Lola. Yeah, Lola is amazing. Yeah, that's our girl. Yeah, Pusha, mm -hmm. Flaugé. It was like um, Capella Gray taking the culture, mm -hmm. the combination of the culture, right? And then I'm my own DJ Khaled, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. me and Khaled came up together. It's like, you know, <laughs> I ain't going. We right. the best. I should be like, oh, I clear. So just taking the culture <laughs> and putting it forward. And every time you hear this record, paper, right? Um, you definitely gonna bounce to it. The energy's right, the messaging is right, but the track is fire. The pa yeah, the track is fire. Congratulations on no. this. And to, to me, this is where the, 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 the this is where we are in our careers. Uh, White Clef John is here, and so make sure you support uh, the song Paper Right. Uh, I'm Tracy, Mike. Y'all want to yeah. jump in? Yeah, go for it. You know, I'm wondering, Clef, have you always been a humanitarian and very community oriented. The reason why I ask that is because in the entertainment industry, especially as an artist, and America in general is very individualistic, right? And it's like, okay, what can I get? Sometimes when you're um, on the path to fame, there's so much pandering to self, to self, to self, to self. Um, and so I'm wondering, ha did you have to fashion yourself to think about the collective more or was that something that was always innate to you well i that's definitely a good question i always say all you gotta do is go back to the dna mm -hmm. fuji's first album blunted on reality the first song is a poem to the klu klux klan um and so uh can you imagine that 
a record company's giving you money and they get an album and the first song is <laughs> <It's> like, <"Yo, laughs> sometimes I think blended on reality ain't do good because you know Klu Klux Klan was like nah we ain't putting that out right? that might have been true though so, <laughs> that just... was like the first joint <laughs> yeah. was like you know um, it just say that then the second part of it is coming from a third world country yes. like, so by the time I got to America I was 10 years old and we lived in the projects right now anybody that really know me know know me mm -hmm. like and I'm gonna say this once I am probably one of the most gangsterous individuals that you'll ever run into. Anyone that knows me knows knows me. Mm. The power of an individual is not having a hundred niggas with you. The powers of an individual is in the pen, right? Ah. Because always remember that. Because with the pen, I can make a hundred niggas come for you, mm. right? So think about that. So what they do is they reverse that facade on us. So they be like, no, you need to to roll with, with an entourage. You need, you know how many people get killed through this process? So coming up, like I said, I used to look from the project window. I was on the roof with the project with my little brother and we looked like, what are we gonna do in America, right? Yeah. Half of my family deported. Some be, went in prison. It was like, so what's the narrative? What, how you gonna break the cycle? Fuji's, Jay-Z, Nas, if they're listening. I mean, everybody know we all came up together. Yeah. Fuji's, brought uh, Jay-Z and Nas to Europe, right? So, and, and why? The because Fugees brought Jay-Z and Nas to Europe? Yeah, yeah. The, the Jay-Z wow. with Nas opened up for the Fugees, yeah. What year was that? In the 90s, of course. Yeah. But again, yeah. but I, I ain't like, it's just factual. But uh -huh. the, the, the reason why you probably don't hear us talk about this kind of stuff, it ain't really important. But the part of it that's important is why was it important to go to Europe? Because hip-hop was moving and we always wanted them to have the right information. Mm -hmm. And Nas was the right information. And Jay-Z was the right information. Because, you know, when big shit is happening, fake shit come in. So we always mm. wanted to be part That's of real. that real shit. So as we move forward um, in this generation, my warning constantly is it's better to move in silence, to move quietly, to get what you need done in a proper way. Because if you try to be loud about anything, um, at the end of the day, it's a long game. You see, when uh, Elijah Muhammad right, mm -hmm. said that the white man's a devil, he ain't talking about the white man. It's the analogy, right? The analogy of someone playing you for the long game, right? And the long game is now. Because mm -hmm. it looks like you could be looking like you're getting it, you're getting it. But in the long run, you get blocked and you get stopped, right? Mm. So this is like that messaging that we got to make sure that we get the youth, mm. yeah. like, early. So, like, because right now, think about it. Every two weeks, another rapper is killed. And to my daughter, she's immune to it. It's almost like the culture the has became the yeah. norm to who's going to get shot this week. Yeah. So it's important mm. us as gatekeepers um, to really rock that. So that's how we think, the way I'm thinking now, that's how we always thought. You okay, know I mean? Wyclef John, we got a few minutes, so we're going to speed up a little bit. Mike Muse, what you got? Yes, I love that uh, hip-hop has turned 50, and I know that you said you had the Benjamin Button vibes, and, and you look absolutely amazing and young and youthful, and I heard that you said that you can hear the stadium now, right, and you, mm. and you caught the vibe. I'm just wondering, coming off of Paper Right 2024, what is Rightcloth John thinking about in terms of material? What would what would your topics be? Like, what's on your mind? I know you can hear the stadium maybe from a production perspective, but. Yeah, when I hear the stadium, I hear it from a world's perspective stadium. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, we have different crises around the world that we have to unite. You know, the Middle East, we have a crisis. Um, Africa, we have a crisis. Congo. Chicago, yeah. we have crisis. Mm -hmm. Africa, we got crisis. So when we talk about what do we talk about? Um, there's a lot to talk about. And let's start with the idea of how we get back to world peace. How do we respect each other? You know what I'm saying? And how do we not fake the facade of what's going on? If something is murder, let's call it murder. Mm -hmm. If something's right, let's call it right. If something's wrong, let's call it wrong. So um, in saying that, I, I, I hear that side of the stadium. But then I hear the other side. I hear the dance culture. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I used to pop lock, break lock. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I can hear what the bounce needs to be, um, things like that. And then from a production aspect, I can hear the 808s different. You know what I'm saying? Like in the stadium, it rings different. So I had to adjust the whole wave mm -hmm. of the sonics. Like I hear things like that. But keep in mind, so people is like, yo, why Clef, man? Are you, how do you feel, man? Because uh, in the course of history, you know, 
they don't consider you one of the top, you know, top five rappers of all time. How do you feel about that? Now, what's funny about that is Sway knows put me up against anybody mm -hmm. when it comes to lyrical jousting. I came up like that. But as and a young- And live off the top. As a young kid, when I went to school, I left Brooklyn, I went to Jersey, and my, my, my teacher saw me in an auditorium like playing piano, circle, circle of fifths, very difficult. I didn't know how to read music. She was like, where you learn that? I said, I could hear it in my head. And she was like, tomorrow, you're gonna start jazz and classical music. And I was like, well, she was like, how many instruments you play? I said, 14. Mm. And then, so now, the original Wyclef instrument, you could watch it, Eric B and Rakim video, Don't Sweat the Technique, that's me on upright bass. So, this is doom, 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 yeah, doom. Yeah. That's you playing that? That's me doing the finger oh, oh, upright doom, bass. Doom, 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 doom. Yes, sir, so, Crazy. I'm barely 17. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Don't sweat the technique. Yeah, don't sweat the technique. That's me right there on the upright bass. That's me right That's there. That's you playing yeah. this. That's me on on um the video doing yeah. the fingering. Yeah. yeah, so listen He's to this. He's doing the fingering in the, the video. Fingering. Oh, but listen, how did I get to do the fingering? Okay. This is very important because in high school, I was a jazz major. So in the video, you can't have like a fake person doing the fingering. So I was a big fan of Rakim and I saw him on the page that was doing a video. I took my upright bass. My man took his drums and we literally went to this video shoot without an idea of like we could be in the video. Do you see the hustle? Yeah. I got a big ass <laughs> upright bass on a train, man. So I, I carry this big ass bass and I get in front of there and we get inside of this video and do like, you know, the fingering. I said, of course, I know the song, I know the fingering. And when you watch this video, that's why when I, when I used to go to music videos, I used to just hang with the extras. And I'd be like, yo, I'm the most famous extra. Because <laughs> nobody, nobody knew who I was. I got like 10 shots. Do you know how? And I ain't why Clef John in that. I, I'm like, my first name, Nell. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so just to say, I didn't want to be the top five rappers. I wanted to be the top five composers in the mm. universe, like Gershwin or Quincy Jones. So my thing is, I'm obsessed by rappers. I'm obsessed by the talent. But for me... um, I want to go down as a composer. I'm telling you, I'm the first rapper to ever play Carnegie Hall with a full Philharmonic Orchestra. Yeah. Like, so, so imagine Shh. that. So we go from there to now. So it's so important for you to know your position in history and make sure that you write it down right. Yeah. Man, why yeah. Clef John, man? I'm hearing stuff I didn't know. <laughs> Dog, I thought you knew that was I know, me. I know, I knew that. You know that. that. Yeah. I just like to flank it bigger than it Don't is. Don't sweat the technique. technique. I'm going to do two more questions. DB, what's your question? Yeah, just going back to helping the youth avoid the pitfalls of, you know, things and decisions that we've uh, done coming before them. What would you say are some of the do's and don'ts you've learned as a solo and uh, touring as a band, like like the tour life? What would you say are some of the do's and don'ts? I would say that the tour life is very important that you keep your nose clean. Mm. You feel what I'm saying to you? So, and... I could tell y'all that, like, no cap, and I still look like myself. I ain't lose nothing. Mm -hmm. But at 20, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you got a million dollars on a bid, and then everyone's doing lines of cocaine. You feel what I'm saying? LSD, acid, everything you could think about, right? So it's sort of like, mm. I really was like, it was hard for me to touch that stuff because I used to watch it being sold in the community. And I used to see what it did to folks. So the shit scared me straight up from the top. So when I tell the, 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 I look, I ain't here like, I ain't gonna tell you like I ain't never tried anything. Like that would be so, at the end, I ain't gonna cap. But at the end of the day, it's important that you don't fall into that victim because man, my whole entire industry, if I could tell you one thing about the tour life and the fast life, man, drugs and alcohol is like beyond the devil. And I've watched it completely destroy. So what I try to tell the youth is like just, especially now with the pills, you know what I'm saying? Every time you take a pill, it's like you, 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 you're you thinking. And nine times out of 10, most of the kids that you hear them talking about taking a pill, maybe they taking one. But the actual, um, the audience that's listening to it, because they're saying they taking 20 at once, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The kids do it. That's true. So, um, so again, man, just try to keep your nose clean, you heard? All right, um, Ray Love, who you brought with you, man? I brought J.K. Mack from out here. J.K. Mack, get in the camera. He's Come on, here. get in front of the mic. He had that No Love record last year. J.K. Mack, I know yeah, who yeah, you yeah. are. Come on, J.K. Mack, get this man a big round of applause. Don't jump into the question, man. 
baby. Yeah. Let it bask in it. Bask in it, baby. Yeah, man. What's tell up, child? Tell, 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 tell them who you, where you from. Tell us a little of your history, man. Uh, my name is J.K. Matt. I'm from Montgomery, Alabama. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. And, you know, I grew up in music. My mom was a piano prodigy. My dad was on a rock and roll band. I played eight different instruments. Nice. Oh. And, you know, I had okay. a record blow up last year. Shout out to Shade 45 cause they, they spinning it The first time I heard on the radio It was on Shade 45 Come so. on that's what we do man Yeah on, I love man. Showing love For okay. real okay. But you know uh, I got a question though So In terms of longevity You feel me You know besides Like he was talking about Artists dying and stuff Besides that though How do you feel like Someone like me I'm 24 You feel me yeah. How do you feel like Somebody like me Stays around the game Well I mean You just said the first thing Is like you 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 play instruments right so automatically if you play them instruments you know that puts you in the category of the Y Clefs the Quincy Jones the Gershwins the automatically that means that you ain't just doing music like you actually doing music and the longevity of the music the 360 is this here's the here's the cheat code let me get to you so when 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 my friends was worried about having music on the radio I was like we can have music on the radio while I do music for film while I was doing music for mm. films, then I was doing like um, Life, Eddie Murphy, Martin Lawrence, I was doing Hotel Rwanda. This was nothing on the radio. Ah! Then I was looking at it and said, okay, not only can I do music for film, then I was like, hold up. I'm sitting here with these freaking engineers, right? And these dudes are just mixing jingles. And they making like 200K just mixing a jingle. Then I was like, hold up, I gotta start writing some jingles. Started writing some jingles, building the bank. So look at the game like a 360. Do not look at it like try to get every part of the money because you don't have to leave no money on the table. You know you literally could make not just albums where you singing, literally think about like Mission Impossible. Like you could score Mission Impossible if you had that opportunity. So that's how you got to think. Big, big. Mm -hmm. Boy, I appreciate that. Likewise. You do music for the shy, right? Oh, wow. Shout out to my girl, Lena Way. You see another example, yeah. mm -hmm. right? And you see, I don't even talk about it. So to show the Shah, I was brought in to do the score for the Shah. So I'm like, the the again, the composer coming in, doing that jazz for the Shah. And I have a, a platform I'll put you on, on after this. It's called Soto Mood Lab, and it's for composers like you. Mm. Like, we the different ones, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay. we be like, we want to do it all. So I look forward to rocking. Yeah. Uh -huh. What's, next you, What's next for you, brother? What's next for you, Congratulations. What's next for you? Oh, what's next for me? Oh, I got this new single coming out called Roll Up. Samples that uh, Ludacris roll out. Mm -hmm. That's what I've been playing on. I've been, I grew up on samples. I grew up on Tribe Called Quest, Wu Tang. Oh. Like, I'm a young cat, but my yeah, folks is on that. You feel me? You one of us. He one of us. So, yeah. so like, yeah. I grew up on that. So I really like playing with the samples. That just really what speaks to me. And I like to make records that can make people feel, make people move. You feel me? And I can touch on touchy subjects, all that. Love it. Say your name, man. J.K. Matt, you feel me? Come on, look at him, man. Look at him. Yo, you know what? You're going to have to send me some secret records. I can't tell you for who they are, but it sounds like you got the pause. He man. got it, right? All right. Come on, man. I we'll make some that of that production. Hey, any of the jingles you wrote we would know? Man, I wrote, so I was, we was talking about the movies, right? Yeah. So um, so here's here's another fact check. Uh, Google, mm -hmm. um, so Black, Black, um, Black Friday. Um, I had partnered up with Google, and I wrote like 20 jingles just for black owned companies wow. when black friday was coming out so if you google that you could definitely check that out b i'm gonna put you up on last thing right so they're gonna think you crazy like so for example you know how crazy they think i'm i'm about to say something's about to mess everybody up here you can google this right nasa called me nasa, NASA. rockets right nasa yeah n-a-s-a yeah. NASA. yeah okay nasa hit me up like yo okay. clef yo listen man we sending a rocket to space right and then what it's gonna do is it's gonna record all these sounds that we gonna bring the sounds from space back to Earth. We ain't gonna let too many people hear that. But what we wanna do is know if you could put those frequencies in music and then start a healing mechanism through the music. Mm. So there's a record called Borrowed Time. Now when you listen to this record, Borrowed Time, the mechanism and the sonics that's coming through it is from space. Mm. Now remember the reason why I told you this is now as crazy as this sound, the greatest healing, natural healing that we as human have is natural vibration. You yes. can heal yourself. They don't tell you that. But Google that. So I just want to tell you, the more crazier they think you are, that's when you up to something. You heard? Uh -huh. <laughs> I love it, man. Give it up for White Clef, John. Bow. JK. That was some game. Yeah. JK Mac, come on, man. Welcome to the show, bro. Welcome, yeah. welcome, welcome. Yeah. Congratulations. Come Share your social as well. All my socials, at, everything is at J.P.K.P.M.A.C. You feel me? 
J. K. Mac, Ray Love, the legend, the Bay Area legend. Ray Love, thank you, Ray. Yo, Clef, uh, Ray, family with Pac and everybody. E40, uh, we're, re- we're we're related as well. And when we did the renaming of Pac, uh, a street renamed it to Pac's name um, in Oakland, California. Ray Love called me and asked me to moderate that whole ceremony. Mm. That that's a, that's a insanely amazing respect to that. Yeah. When we landed in E40's borough, I did hit him up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, and yeah. I was like, "Yo, we we have a show. That it'd be an honor to come out." And um, and then he was uh, he was uh, he was like, "Man, he and Matt, like, I would love to come." He was on the other side. So again, respect, yes. 100, percent because like as far as like the culture, I think even the way you influence us, you know what I mean? Like just the idea of like that social mechanism yeah. has to just be part of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. I'm about to bar with him offline. Yo, though. Frack, yo, bro, Frack, yo. <laughs> shout out to Frack, yo. Frack, Clef on the cypher to, with you, baby. Offline, JK you know back, he gonna cypher with you, too. All right? Yeah, yeah. Give it up for Frack, man. Thanks for coming through today, man. That was great. JK said I'm yo, chilling. Yo, we had a great week this week. Shout out to all the citizens, all the guests. Kevin Hart, Daniel Kalua. Yeah, Lakeith Stanfield. Okay, Kane Robinson. The every, director, James. Yeah. Samuel. James Samuel. Samuel's, yeah. Yo, yo, Beverly Johnson. Paper right, man. I need y'all to rock that for We about to play it again, man. Yeah, yeah. We about to, yeah, I'm going to be texting you every like two days. Yo, yo you do it. I play you, every day. Hold up, hold up. Watch this. Torch, can you play that every day? Facts. There it is. Right. Bomb. Call okay, Clef, I love you, brother. Every yeah, time, man. Hey, right, chill, man. We still man. doing this, baby. They can't right. stop this. Come Come on, man. You can't Hold stop up. nothing. Y'all know where to reach us. Y'all have a great weekend. Stay on the right side of positivity. I need everybody in the room to make some noise. Oh. Everybody have a great weekend. Uh, we'll be back, God willing, front of next week. And on that note, citizens, please support this song. This song is for the youth. Yes. All right. And anytime you stream this song, there will be money that will be donated. A dollar. A dollar that will be donated Amazon. to first. Y'all know Jeff Bezos got money. Yeah. yeah. First generational <laughs> investors. Uh, this is Paper Right by Wyclef. And we got a uh, thank you to the team. Great show. Great week this yes. week. DB, Torch, yes, Kalani, Mike Muse, yes, Heather B, we and are- Tracy. And on that note, we got nothing left to say. <laughs> <laughs>